it has been very busy here. I apologize for not posting a lot. It has been crazy. Hi you guys, happy Monday. It is October 12th and I'm going back to the school for in-person learning. I am so excited. Although not all my students are returning, I am at least getting half of them in person, so I'm super excited. I'm gonna go grab some coffee because I didn't have enough time. Right now it's 7.03, so I'm gonna go grab some coffee and then head to the school. I'll see you guys there. Bye. Hi you guys, I'm in my classroom. I literally have like 20 minutes before kids come in, so I'm a bit freaking out right now. But I wanted to show you what I put on the desks. So that is their name, they have their pencil, so these are jumbo straws that I taped together. And then this all about me thing, and then I got some candy for them. So I set those up. As of right now, there's one kid at each table, and I still have like, four empty tables that aren't being used and then there's their lunch or their breakfast right there but yeah it's coming along all right you guys this is what i'm wearing today i made this shirt that says third grade is on point matched with my pretty um skirt i have some of these chunky shoes on from target i believe i have my earrings and then my school mask on but i can't wait Hi you guys, okay so currently the kids are at lunch. It's my lunch time as well, so I need to eat lunch. Um, but this morning has gone by very smoothly. My kids are acting wonderful in the classroom and in the hallways, their hallway procedures, they got them on point. I'm just very proud of them and how smoothly it's going. Hi you guys, so it is currently recess time, so the kids have already gone to lunch, they've already had their special class, they're at recess now, and so I'm just trying to get a few things cleaned up. With my online students, today was really difficult and different for them. I met with them in the morning, but then the timing and the scheduling is completely different from the online to the in-person, so I still have to figure out how I'm gonna do that. But basically, we have the rest of the day and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Hi, you guys, so it is the end of the day. I know I rarely even picked up my camera. I had no time to. Today was amazing. Like, I actually felt like a teacher today. So tomorrow's just a new day and we're gonna get started, get in the schedule, making sure my online students, you know, are participating as well. But yeah, super exciting. Hi you guys, so I wanted to pop in this video real quick and show you these cute t-shirts I got from Thread Tank. They sent them over to me. I got to pick out the color, what it said on them, and the size, and I absolutely am obsessed with these shirts. I gotten so many compliments on these shirts every time I wear them, so I thought I would show you guys in case you guys were interested and wanted to go purchase one of your own. So these are the shirts that I got. Oops, it's blurry. So I got this teacher one that is in the Friends font. It's absolutely so cute and it's so comfortable. These shirts are just so soft, so flowy. And then this one is one of my favorites. It says she taught happily ever after with this cute little feather and um, my vice principal complimented on this one. She loved it. So um, I love the color of it. it it's coming off a lot more red than it actually is, but it's like a red pink type color. And you can kind of see I don't think you can, but um, the material of it. And then the last one is this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O kind of shirt. It's so cute. I love the font. I love the style. And even also the type of t-shirts that they use are just so good, good quality and everything. So I've definitely worn these. As you can see, they were on my drying rack. So I've obviously worn these a couple times. So super cute shirts so if you're interested it's thread tank i will leave a link in the description box below but yeah i thought i would let you guys know about these cute little t-shirts so yeah okay bye hi you guys happy monday today is october 19th i'm super excited for this week i've already done one whole week in the classroom with students and it's been amazing so it is a brand new week i can't wait it's picture day today and we have testing later on this week so it should be a very interesting week i can't wait so i will see you guys in the classroom bye hi you guys so today is tuesday october 20th 2020 and i had my parent teacher conferences last week so i thought i would answer some questions that some of you guys sent in on my instagram if you haven't checked that out it is lena loves teaching so i have a couple questions that i would like to answer for you guys just 
to help you um, if you are a first year teacher doing parent teacher conferences. So I'm looking down at the questions if you're wondering. The first question is from Elementary with Emma. She asked, did you share your screen, send packets home, or just talk about the data? So for me, we um, originally were supposed to meet on Google Meets. That's what we use. We don't use Zoom or anything. Half of my kids are in person, so half of their computers were here at the school, and the parents, if they didn't have their student's Chromebook, could not get into the meeting because they needed a school account. So last minute, I kind of just changed them all to phone conferences, which actually ended up working out really well. I printed off their Odysseyware grade report, so that is the main curriculum that they are doing this year. And so I basically printed out that report, basically told me um, every lesson, quiz, and test that they've done since the beginning. I went over their grades with them if there was any concerns that I had with the students. I also mentioned about the map testing that we're doing. It started this week and then going into next week for my online students. I also asked if they had any questions or concerns for me. Some of them did, some of them didn't. Yeah, it went really well um, just with that phone conference. The next question is from Maddie underscore M. Tips for virtual conferences, how did you prepare? So that was the whole thing is I was expecting to see the parents face to face, but I didn't. And so what I did was I just, like I said, Okay, sorry about that. So um, tips for virtual conferences and how did you prepare? Like I said, I just kind of printed their grade report, went over their grades with them, have talked about the testing that we're doing, talked about other things inside the classroom that we were doing for my in-person students. Kind of just really answering any of their questions or concerns that they had because obviously this year was very difficult and different. So um, some of them did, some of them didn't. She also asked, how do you approach tough conversations with parents? So so for example, I had a student who got ahead in Odyssey where before fall break and so blocked him so he wouldn't go further because we were not there yet. And so when he came back in person, all of his scores from when he got ahead were really good. So either 80s or above. And so when we got in person, I wanted to see it in action. I wanted to see kind of what he knew since before I couldn't see that. And so I reassigned the quiz. Come to find out that he has trouble reading, writing, counting, place value, and everything. And he was getting 100% on some of these lessons and quizzes. And so it really uh, concerned me because if he's that low and he's scoring that high, I don't know who is doing his lessons for him. And so how I approached that in the parent-teacher conference was I did ask if there was anyone at home who was helping him um, with the lessons and she said that the mom and the boyfriend were. And I kind of just let her know that his scores in Odyssey were do not match where he's at in person. And so we kind of had a conversation with how he what level he's at um and i just made sure to let her know too that to continue reading with him at night to continue practice i um also am working with him as well in the classroom and i wanted to make sure that she knew that as well so um that was probably the toughest conversation i had with that was just making sure that no one was doing his odyssey wear lessons at home and not him because that has happened so yeah, kind of just being honest. I feel like you just have to be honest so they understand what's going on. It didn't turn out bad or anything, so it actually ended up doing really well. Danielle Mariscal935 asked, what did you do once the families walked in your classroom? So unfortunately with COVID, we weren't allowed to have parents come into the school. So we did virtual or phone meetings and how I did that was we did sign up Genius. I had them for 15 minutes set and then gave myself a five minute break in between them. So then I didn't have any overlapping and it actually turned out pretty well. Most of the parents did answer. If they didn't, we just rescheduled it. So um, yeah, they weren't able to come in the classroom, which was kind of upsetting, but that's okay. Janaya T asked, what data do you provide for the parents? How did you collect student data? So with that, I just used our curriculum that we were using um, in Odyssey where I printed out their grades basically from the first day of school till now. And that's basically all the data I have because the in-person students just came back last week and I have no writing samples. I have no real data. So so um, that was the only data I really had, so I just wanted to share that with them. Sammy Smalls asked, how to encourage parents it's okay if a student isn't on standards. I am ASD. So if they're not on the standards, like for example, I think this is what this question is asking is that if they're in third grade, are they at the third grade standards? So 
Um, I do not have all my students at grade level. I kind of am teaching first, second, and third graders because they're kind of all over the place. So I just encourage the parents who are at home with their students or their children to encourage reading at home, practice with reading. Um, if they're struggling with reading, then to help them sound it out and help them read it. They're not on the standards, just more practice at home and on their free time, they can do another website that we have for them. So just encouraging more practice, especially with reading that builds fluency and comprehension. I also mentioned addition and subtraction, multiplication as well. So just making sure that they are practicing at home because it is difficult to see what the students are doing. Also, I probably only had half of my parents sign up, which was kind of disappointing. Um, I wish I could have talked to more of my online students' parents, but it is what it is. Emily Quinton asked, can you share what you talked about at conferences? So I kind of already mentioned that, kind of what I've talked about. I also talked about if students were really good in the classroom, that I kind of praised them. I talked about the testing. So because of COVID, it's kind of hard to have a lengthy meeting just because we haven't really done much together because they're online doing their odyssey wear so it's just been a little bit difficult but yeah so i just kind of updated them with what's going on if they had any questions or concerns i was prepared for any of the questions because i know that this year is very weird and difficult so yeah but mainly just their grades data from their grades any concerns that i had for any students if they were really good students to kind of just let their parents know next question is from cassandra marie she asked what tips do you have for other first year teachers who do who have never had a conference before i was prepared but i wasn't as prepared as i should have been um, just because i didn't know how this was supposed to go i've never done a conference before and it just was different for me. And when I was student teaching, I had actually been absent for the last two days of conferences. And so it was hard to really understand, especially last year, it was right before the AZ Merit. Obviously they didn't take it. And that's the state test for Arizona. If I were you for first year teachers, just get any data you have, whether that's grade from the curriculum that you're doing online, whether that's if you're doing hybrid and you have students in person, how are they in the classroom? Are they good listeners? What are they doing inside the classroom? But because we're in this situation right now, we don't have a lot of writing samples if we did. If we were in person from the beginning, I feel like I'd have a lot more data, especially from the testing that we would have done in August. And this year, it just was a little bit different because we didn't have as much as we usually would concerned with or related to data. So yeah, I keep hearing keys and I don't know who the keys are from. <laughs> okay, so last question is from Bruiser. Bruiser LT 2005, what do you like about this year so far and one thing you don't like? So one thing I don't like is just how this year started, how everything kind of went just because college didn't uh, prepare me for this. I didn't know how this year was gonna go. I didn't know what I was doing, but I like how I was able to get in the swing of things. I think also that I am being recognized by my colleagues and the people around me. Um, exciting news, I won Teacher of the Month of September. So I literally had a smile on my face the entire weekend. When you think that you're not doing enough, you really are in the eyes of others. So just keep doing the best that you can. We are amazing that we are in this type of situation because this most likely will not happen again for a long time. And the fact that I am a first year teacher, just graduated from college, and I'm teaching in a pandemic is freaking crazy. So I have definitely learned so much this year, but I still feel like it's not 100%. So maybe that's because I don't have all my kids in my classroom. But yeah, so one thing I like is just finally meeting my students, finally just being able to interact and actually feel like a teacher teaching in my classroom with students. So that kind of wraps up the questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed those. I will be asking, like doing more Q and A's. It has been very busy here. I apologize for not posting a lot. It has been crazy. Hard for me to get in the routine of it. Hard for me to even be on social media. Sometimes I get through these really weird phases where I just, it overwhelms me. And the more I say off of it, it overwhelms me even more to get back to it because I know I've missed so much. So sometimes I just like, don't even open up Instagram. 
I'll go on TikTok for hours, but that's a different situation. Anyway, so yeah, I apologize for not being as present. I know a lot of you have sent me messages that have been really, really sweet, um, making sure that I'm okay and that they miss this content. So I am back. Hopefully, you never know how the week goes and how tired I am. I literally, this is the first day that my water is empty. I have been so bad with drinking my water. At the end of the day, I'll pick up my Yeti and it's completely full. I'm like, Lena, that is so bad because especially we live in Arizona, I need to stay hydrated. So I'm really proud of myself for finishing my Yeti today because now I'm hydrated. So I hope you guys have a good day and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye guys.